peace, peace. Welcome to the Scrap Bro MMA podcast. I'm your host, Sky. We got the host, Chase, and CJ in the building. Uh, Damien is not here, uh, but hopefully he'll be able to make it on next week for the pay-per-view because, you know, the pay-per-view is going to be crazy, but we're going to leave that for the end of the show and for next week, right? Uh, we are back off of UFC Mexico and PFL champions versus Bellator champions. That's what they called the card, not me. Uh, <laughs> first of all, Let's start. Which one y'all want to start with? Um, UFC Mexico PFL and them. PFL. PFL, really? I yeah, nah, I mean, with UFC. Start from, nah, start from the bottom and go to the top. Really? Because oh, I think shit. pound for pound that the fucking uh, PFL card, I would, shit, the fights might have been better on that than UFC Noche. The UFC Noche card was, was not it. It was not typical Viva El Mexico. Think so? Well. Well, let's start with PFL. It did start early. Fair. For us, on the West Coast, started at 9.30 a.m. Um, I think we was all watching it, right? Yeah. Um, how would y'all rate the card? Overall. CJ? I was in and out watching it, so I was watching it on my phone. I watched some of the early cards. But all in all, I thought it was a good production, some good fights here and there. I wish all the fights that were supposed to happen happened on the card. But all in all, I think I'll give it a 6.8 for a PFL Bellator fight. We had some exciting fights, a couple snoozers here and there. But, you know, from coming out the box, it was cool. It was cool. Hey, man, it's always good coming out of the box. <laughs> no, it's better coming in the box. Oh. I know, man. Try, try to keep that kid game low, you heard? Oh, um, trust me. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, I actually, like, jammed with... <laughs> you know. Hey, has this CG been shooting blanks for a while now? Hey, yo. Hey. Before, and more, man, give me more. Give me just one kid, and that's it, bro. I don't need no more. Just little motherfucker turning into a preteen. <laughs> Thug life. Stress levels get high, man. Like damn. Thug life. They stop. They stop being cute, and it's like, oh lord. Oh, you want some Jays too, nigga? Wait a second. Wait, yeah. wait, wait a goddamn second. Um, I guess before we even like really talk about it overall, it's CJ, you made a very interesting point about production because a lot of people online, you know, I feel like a lot of like casuals actually watched even, even if it's just the prelims. I don't know. I guess there's maybe like three, maybe four niggas out there who ordered the pay-per-view, you know, me, <laughs> I, I got a friend who know a friend, you know, kind of a thing. We handled it that way. Shout out to the internet. Um, but I feel like there's a lot of people just talk about like the, the, the production value over this compared to a UFC. I'm kind of just wondering like, what y'all think? Nothing touches the UFC in my opinion. Uh, but Bellator Homer. made some, I am a Homer, uh, but Bellator made some improvements. I mean, PFL made some improvements because before I hated watching PFL because they'd have these long extended periods between fights that felt like an eternity. Uh, at least this time, it felt like the pace was a whole lot better. First thing I noticed, because I started watching from the first fight. Um, I don't know, the first three cards, first three fights, they were cutting the commercial and then coming back in with like two and a half minutes left in the round. I'm like, what are y'all doing? Like, this is a this is a live fight. Like, why are Facts. you cutting commercials in? Um, Facts. But, I mean, they were having a lot of speaker issues going on. They were actually they were playing stuff that, like, they weren't supposed to be playing from, like, commentators. There were open live mics that weren't supposed to be open. There was a lot I of love stuff it. that maybe most people won't care about. Um, but for me, if we're talking about production, I mean, it's just the UFC is superior. But they, mm. they did much better. What do you think, CJ? As far as that, I couldn't hear. Like I said, I was on my phone because I was moving around. But I like, you know how... Bellator used to look kind of poor, right? This, this, the, the, the arena had no flash, no nothing. It's just boring, no paint on the wall, nothing. It was cool to see the lights. That brings that Saudi money hitting a little different right now. So that was cool. Uh, like I said, there was some fights. I see some good things happening. 
but there was a lot of stars on this on this car so I'm, I'm like what's happening next francis and fahed is coming up pretty soon that should be a banger but i don't know how they're gonna build a card around it because who else they got there. Real quick, um, what about you, Jace? Um, for so for me, I really liked the production value. Um, I was really digging the the entrance. You know, I liked the yep. fucking the, the the pyro. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, I was talking to Sky off cam. I know she was saying like she likes people kind of walking through the crowd. Like, nah, man, I like people having an entrance. Like, allow me to introduce mm-hmm. myself. My name is you know. And oh. I think about even with the UFC, right? Like when we think about entrance, like we don't really give a fuck, but when like izzy came out like undertaker right like we all was fucking hyped about it because loki i think we all enjoy that as well like when he did like the whole little dance and shit like yo if you can do all that shit like yo rock with it you know what i mean i think people should give the option um i also think that i really like the ref cam i think that's really fucking cool i love i love the ref cam you know, I would love to see the UFC implement that. It's just a different. I mean, because you're not getting closer than that. You know what I mean? It's like facts. when you see the rep is seeing, bruh, best was, seat in I the was, house, bro. Facts, facts. You know, I've heard that once in my life before. Uh, but it's just <laughs> a, a, <laughs> it's just yeah, it's a great thing. Um, I, it took me a while to like the lighting you know because they really like darken out everything on the outside and the only thing and at first i was texting sky like i fucking hate this but then as it progressed i was like you know what i, I kind of like it i kind of like it yeah I, I i think it was a huge improvement um from what they previously had I, so i can't knock that um i think even like cj was texting me when they were doing like the ceremony of weigh-ins and he was like oh shit this looks a whole lot better like it looks yeah, like the one FC look mm-hmm. going on. Because before, when they used to do the ceremonials, they would just be at a hotel banquet room. Mm-hmm. They'll just come in and come out, pause, come in and come <laughs> out, and you'd be like, man, this, I don't want to watch this shit. You know, yeah. it just looked like my uncle put on a production show. <laughs> and they just went on uncle. like that. I was like, yeah, <laughs> like, come on now. Now, you know, they're stepping it up. So they, they're going in the right direction. What y'all think Can they continue thing? to do it? What happens, guy? You don't think about the stadium. It it seemed like it was kind of kind of empty back there, huh? That's probably why they darked everything out. It was empty, and it was outside, y'all. And yeah, I did see that. Yeah, I Were like they fighting that. at nighttime. Yeah, mm-hmm. I like that they were outside. Mm-hmm. You know, in the desert? No, thank you. <laughs> Better than the daylight in the desert. Can you imagine fighting someone in Phoenix, Arizona in August? Nigga, it's a fucking 115 degrees. Nah, bro, I don't want it. You want to get this work? No, I don't. No. Want to go home? Want to go outside? Canvas hot as hell. Oh, my God. It's just so many things to to fucking think about here. I'm Gucci, man. I'm Gucci. How do you feel about Clarissa? Um, Yeah. I, I I actually um I feel like Clarissa made a lot of uh, improvement in this fight. Like she looked more comfortable. Like she was nasty in the clinch. First of all, mm. obviously her biggest room for improvement is on the ground. Being able to get mm-hmm. back up this time, she was able to get back up like in her previous fight, but this time she wasn't able to get back up. Um, but I mean, her opponent didn't do nothing with the takedown. She got the takedowns and just like I was like, are you trying to do like a smother submission? Like what are you doing? Like you're not even. Kind of getting at the mouth after she she almost killed her in the second round. She almost got her out of here. Yo, you your know? girl was tired, tired. You know what I'm saying? One thing I did yeah, like about, one thing I did like about it was her post fight. You know, her acknowledging just like how hard it is. Like, she's like man, mm-hmm. she's like, the gym. She's like, you know, I'm I'm respecting the sport. Like, I'm showing up. And you know, you got a lot of haters out there that's just hating on her. I don't I don't know what the issue is. But at the end of the day, this is a two time Olympic champion, uh two time undisputed uh boxing champion, three time uh three divisional uh champion. Like she is that girl when it comes to boxing, you know what I mean? There's no reason for her to even come into MMA. She can just keep standing on her high horse. She's undefeated in boxing and keep doing that. But instead, like she is humbling herself. She's making yeah. herself I seen this point that uh, Ariel Hawani made, and he was like, "This is reminiscent of Michael Jordan 
going and playing baseball. Like you mm. have somebody that, who's like the greatest in their era at that sport going and doing something that they're not great at. Mm. And you know, it's very humbling. So it, like it makes you look at her like at least I do, like as a fucking human being. Like you can't be great at yep. everything, but at least she's trying. And you working know, hard at it. You know, the the thing I really appreciated her the most about was just her post fight. Like she kept that said a buck. You feel me? Yeah. She was like, yo, you know, the first round was cool. She was like, the second round, I know she got me. She was like, I was just trying to will myself on that third round, but I was tired as fuck. I was like, yeah, man, listen, like, we we like real-ass people. You real, know what I'm saying? Real shit, yeah. Yeah, like, and she was like, I know you? it was close. I'm the realest nigga here. What you mean? But you running around liking Kobe Covington? He's that dude. Nigga on, on. <laughs> He's that dude. Come on, now. Nah, he nah. was that no, dude. No, but back to... Back to Clarissa. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, back to Clarissa. I was gonna say she did a lot of good things. She did some bad things, of course. She's not a she's not an MMA fighter. But even when she had that armbar, a lot of people would have tapped in that situation. There are girls who've been fighting a long, long, long time, and she fought it off. And uh, her sprawls were good. You know, she's improving in the sport. I I thoroughly enjoyed watching the fight. Was it the highest level of MMA? It definitely wasn't. But I think she's she's improvement. What happened? We know what you enjoy. Come on, you can't really enjoy that. Chill, chill, chill. Cheeks. It was serving cake. Uh, cake sitter. Oh, that's another thing, too. Uh, Sky, remember they were uh, about to fight, and you were like, oh, they don't have the full mm-hmm. full clothes yeah. on. Yeah. What do you think about that, Jace? I was shocked. I didn't know that that was a thing because, you know, if you ever watch, I know CJ is any of like the WWE stuff there. Like they always got clothes. Crown Jewel. Yeah. The, yeah. The long sleeve shit on. Mm-hmm. And here they did not. So that was wild. Um, they let the yams fly. Card. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Before we even go there, before we get into the main card of the PFL, CJ and I, we just got to clap. We got a clap. We ended the we ended the Black History Month. I want to say twelve and five. Let me double check. You know, um, yeah, we ended Was it 12, twelve and five, five? this year. Boom. Yeah. So, because last we year we PFL was PFL. like four in eight. Well, <laughs> <we're still laughs> <laughs> Y'all it niggas did not do well. It was, it, was bad, it was like two and ten, two and eight, something crazy like that. But this year, twelve and five, gotta give it up for everybody. We started it off with, I mean, obviously Carissa Shield, but then your boy AJ McKee came inside there, like, 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 like somebody told him, if you come inside here and finish this quickly, like, you gonna make more money. The man came inside there and did what he did to Clay Collar. It wasn't even fair. Nice, Do like a hot knife bonuses butter. or anything else. What'd you say? Do they give bonuses for like five to the nine knockout or anything? I don't think they did on this card. Okay. Yeah. Um, I guess uh, I don't really know how much about their uh, pay um, about it being like closed, disclosed kind of a stuff like that. Do they usually give like a performance of the night uh, bonuses over there? Not that I know. They should start. Hey, um, Yoel versus Thiago. Yoel finally got a win. Uh, I, mi- I missed all. Of, I missed all of that fight. So first of all, nigga, you didn't not miss even nothing. Worth watching what I—that's what I figured. <laughs> yeah. Um, Nimkov. The whole won. fight, huh? Oh yeah, and, and and real fast on that. Um, as much as I love Uncle Chael, like by and large broadcasting, your boy was saying the stupidest shit ever in life. He goes, like after the first round, where I think maybe like four punches were thrown the entire fucking round, and oh, he was wow. like, "Oh, like I can understand for like a lot of people, they would like not really understand this, you know, or think this boring." But I found it captivating. Like, nigga, go shit in your hand. You know that that shit was <laughs> whack, bro. Literally threw eight punches the entire fucking round. Yeah, no. Mm. That's not a fight. Um, mm-hmm. Nimkov won. Jason Jackson when he got there. Peace that, that nigga up. Nimkov, I seen that, one. that nigga up. 
he uh, uh, wait wait Nemkov ate like two punches like nah nigga fuck this <laughs> what <laughs> he's like let me go ahead and get up out of here um Bill, I do want to shout us out last week we all took the same kick we only got one wrong that was the Yoel fight because only because and I don't we- I don't even think that should count if those two old right. dudes was in there looking like that like get them out of there we didn't know <laughs> Which Yoel was gonna show up, and it still it wasn't. He's forty six years old. Hey, respect wow. to him. Supposedly, <laughs> supposedly, he might be fifty. He might be fifty three. Um, I, I, but we got pretty. We got the whole main card. All the picks that we made, we pretty much we got them all right except for the Yoel one. Um, so everything played out. I will say, I didn't get a chance to like thoroughly watch the Impa fight, but I've been hearing like the the internet saying the Impa one. <sighs> Um, you know, so I thought that that was probably the the best fight of the night out the of night both organizations. Um, uh, and it was it, it was a coin flip, man. It was, and it sucks that you didn't watch that because because it's one of those things. Is, and this is something as an MMA community we need to decide on is how the fuck are we going to score fights? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because that was classic where it was like, you know, like I think it was round two where like he got dropped the first part of the round. Yes. Johnny did, Work. you know what I'm saying? Was getting beat up for a second. But then the second half of the round literally just fucking just grounded his ass. You know what I'm saying? And I think we just need consistency. I know it's supposed to be in order. First is damage. Um, I forget what second. Control. Yeah. Control. Damage, yeah. then control. Oh, um, you know, but it's just like we we need to establish like what we want to be for scoring, and obviously it's always difficult because we all see different things at different times and feel different ways, and you know, it, judging is perspective. Sad, but sad, sad, sad. you know, boxing is easier to score. You know, if someone gets knocked down, it's a ten nine round. Like that's just the way it's established. But those are not MMA rules, and I think that's one of the things that pisses me off about MMA is they still try to have the boxing motto, mm-hmm. and they don't need a boxing m- m- motto. They need their own. Absolutely. Hopefully that happens. Um, and then I don't know who told uh, Ferreira like they was like, hey. Go ahead and finish this night off. Boy came out there, <laughs> dropped Ryan Bader down. It's over. I thought it was interesting that Francis didn't come to the octagon. Yeah. Oh, oh. oh. man, that, that face off would have been dope as hell. Francis would have been looking up at him like, I want to see that. Yeah. Oh, my God. Kind of like, like what Tyson. Man. Which makes me feel like Francis is still one foot in, one foot out when it comes to MMA. Agreed. I'm like, hey, big dog. Get your box of money and leave this information alone. You 37 years old, oh, my guy. I'm telling you, he could, he could get in the next two fights with Joshua and Fury, assuming that he wins, that he, you know, wins, you know, whatever. He could get close to 100 M's. Fuck. How you going to make that much money? How what, what does he look like making, let's say he makes 30, 30, thou against, uh, 30 mil against um, Joshua. And then you going to go fight for what, 10? Maybe over at PSA, three money. <laughs> three, yeah, <laughs> probably three, huh? Training yeah. Camp? You gotta go through an MMA camp. MMA training camp is way hard, harder on your body. You're more susceptible to injuries and stuff. When you could go box, you throw hands, your conditioning, and make more money. Bad math. Make your money, Francis. You he older. He older now. Ain't no reason. Tell yeah. him you's gonna be the African. What 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 did they appoint him as? The African ambassador, uh, ambassador. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, go ahead and do that. Go ahead, and get this money. Yeah, yeah. Slide up out of there. That's my mo. Yeah. Um. I mean, I thought overall it was a pretty good card. Um. You know, it, it was what it was. One perspective that was pointed out on the MMA Hour that I really liked was that obviously, you know, Bellator went five and one. Hell, uh, PFL only won the, uh, the 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 last fight, which I mean I think we all knew, but because they're they're still keeping it PFL and Bellator against each other, you really just write home the thing that 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 MMA fans have been saying, which is that PFL fighters can't beat UFC fighters. 
you y'all y'all acquired Bellator and Bellator swept y'all pretty much. Bellator cleaned y'all out. And so it devalues y'all champion. Like sure, they make a million when they win, but they they get swept. Eh. But didn't yeah. some of the fights fall off though that probably would have been a better fight? It would have been a better fight, but you but at the end of the day, I think we all know that Bellator fighters are better than PFL fighters. This confirmed it. In my no opinion. lies. No and lies so, there. And so it's just like, so now when y'all go to the championship series and we got this person who's doing, you know, you know, who wins the uh, the PFL, but at the end of the day, it's just like, yeah, okay, so, so what? Uh, Ray Cooper has won two times in PFL and then goes out there, got beat up by Darren Brunson, then gets slept by Jason Jackson. Jason Jackson would listen. And listen. I, you know, I love my Hawaiians. Yeah, he looked like he shouldn't have been in there. Like, yo, nigga, there's levels to this. Shout out to Joe Rogan. There's levels to this. I think Ray. It was short notice. We got to put a little caveat. It was a little That's short fair. notice. That's fair. That's fair. You know, there's a little notice. context here and there. Spray enough, but if you're going to go in there and fight. <clears throat> yeah. You know, it was a like Sky Sky yeah, Sky kept sending me things like this fights off, this fights off, this fights off. I'm like, damn, bro, this is not champ versus champ no more. That's what we everybody was excited for at the at the beginning of seeing that. I was like, damn, that kind of sucks. Yeah. Champ versus chump. I would have really liked Chief. to see uh, uh Larissa Pertanko versus uh Cyborg. Mm. That was 100%. that was supposed to be on the card too. Yeah. Yeah. Oh wow! See, yeah, for real. Um, but you know they did mm-hmm. the best. Good. It was a good fight to start off. Uh, to start off for PFL and Bellator since their merger. Um, and you know they got a April twelfth, so the day before UFC three hundred, they'll be here in Vegas, and they're starting their you know their PFL season. Um, nice. Yeah, so that'll be interesting. You see how you didn't even know that, and you you watch majority yeah. of that. You still didn't even know that. That's what we're talking about, y'all. Like, they got to get better. <laughs> They're definitely making an effort. Let's move on to UFC Mexico. Let's do it. So, UFC Mexico came on after PFL Bellator. Okay, cool. Um, How how would y'all rate the card? CJ? Um, all in all, I, I, I enjoyed it. Uh, a lot of fun fights. Uh, I'm sad for a couple of them, but... Uh, I'll probably give it a 7.3. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. I'd probably give it a 6.2. Um, I'll give it a 10 out of 10. No, I'm playing. What? I'm saying <laughs> what? Lies. You lie like a rug, nigga. Stop playing with me. Uh, Yeah, I mean, it, it, it was a... I'm gonna go with six point five. Yeah. yeah. It, and it, really yeah. and really I think I gave it a, a little bit extra just because of the fucking crowd. The and fights in the crowd. Are we adding this to crowd of the year contingent? Oh, this is uh, by far. All right, just making sure. By far. Especially just from the blows that were thrown outside. I mean, <laughs> <I just> got, <laughs> that gotta be in the equation, nigga. That gotta be. You Hell feel like- me? That was Your another boy. Uh, fight, a uh, fight night right there. <laughs> hey, 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 that one big ass dude in uh, the black shirt had a mean ass left circle away from his left. <laughs> this nigga dropped back to back with his left, just bloop, little stupid ass jab. Hey, that wasn't no Sean Strickland out there. <laughs> Haymakers being thrown. Yeah, I mean Mexico was live. I mean we knew Mexico was gonna be live. We knew they were gonna come out, show out. And show love to everybody, um, but I think also because because I'm not used to like watching uh, Bellator or something before the UFC, and then going straight in and then going into the UFC, it was a lot. It was like a lot, and like the fights, there weren't like a lot of like flashy finishes or something crazy happening. So it was, I think that also kind of like just dampened as I was watching. I was kind of just like, oh, okay, that's cool, that's cool too. Um, Let's 
we don't have to go through every single card on here. If there's any fight in particular y'all want to talk about. First of all, Edgar Chai... How you say his last name? I was just about to say his name. Chirez. That motherfucker walking out with the bullets got to be one of the hardest things. It's hardest, pause. such a long time. I love that. Facts, I'm yeah. That is letting him do that because that shit just look cool. He, yeah. He was at Noche with that shit. And we were like, we were like oh yeah, he turned up. And... And he can fight. Yeah. He could scrap, man. He's super good, man. He's tough as hell. I like him a lot. I was just about to say his name, man. Yeah. Tyrez is Facts. a dog for sure. Facts. He definitely did his thing. Um, There were some questionable sc- scorecards. I- I score- the scoring was weird all night. Always is now. Yeah, I hate that yeah. it's just constantly a fucking talking point. Yeah. Uh, the Raul Rosas versus Ricky Tercio hurt me. When that fight got pulled, yep. I was hurt. And y'all you didn't want to see your boy lose in Mexico? Who, Raul? Yeah. Raul, Raul's going to win. Keep that energy. <laughs> and I like and I like Ricky Tercio, but Raul's going to win that fight. You think so? Yeah. I you guess we'll find out this do? weekend. Did, did they officially add him? Yeah, it's officially added. Oh, okay. Is it for sure? I thought that I thought it wasn't though. I thought oh, uh, Torso it, didn't take it. It's on the site. I heard. I heard they wanted to make the fight. Hey, um, Uncle Dana called. Like, listen up here, little nigga. Take this fight. You get cut. Which one's it going to be? You want to fight? You want to go <laughs> home? I'm Gucci the way, man. Gucci. Right. Let's talk about the two fights that really matter: Ayer Rodriguez versus Brian Ortega. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Before we go there, before we go there, can yeah. we get a shout shout out to Zell Huber? Because that fight was fire too. He did his thing. Yeah, that and, was a fire ass fight. Bottom, too. I don't know how to take a beating. Hey, he, here's the thing, and I, and I texted to Scott. This was your classic thing of a fighter versus a brawler. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Even though that first round, that first round, that first round is 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 is. Candidate for a round of the year. That first round was fire, bro. Your boy Zell Hoover was like, nah, nigga, let me circle away. <laughs> Eat this jab. Wow, wow. Yep, you exactly. Use, use his range, team. beat his ass. What'd you say, Sky? You said at that the round of the year? Oh yeah. The first round, the first round specifically, for sure. I thought that, uh, yeah, it it was a really good fight, as y'all can see. It got a uh, fight of the night, obviously. When your boy's eye was closed, shout out to his coach. His coach was like, you don't need your eyes to see. <laughs> that was that was awesome. That was awesome. You don't need your fucking eyes. Let's go. Love it. You know what? Coach is right. I don't need my eyes. <laughs> uh, but he went out there. He tried. He gave his best. And, uh. You know, we respect it. Um, how did y'all feel about Yair versus Brian Ortega, though? Okay, so like I was saying, and now I'm not. I'm not about to say, "Oh man, T City's back." Blah blah blah. Yes, it was a great win. Uh, very unexpected. You know what I'm saying? Um, Yair didn't look like the typical Yair. Yair, you could say that's because of Ortega. You can say that Yair, who, you know, it, it don't really fucking matter. Ortega went in there and choked this nigga out. Like, sh- shout out to, to, to Brian Ortega. Um, you know, good for him. I ain't gonna lie. After the first round, I was already like, hey, this dude, Brian, is done. I ain't gonna lie to y'all. Bag I was like, why Brian Bag always him up. Look like after a fight, he already had the mouse up under his eye. He was looking crazy. I'm like, yeah, you're about to go out here and finish this man. It didn't happen the second round. And then he ended up finishing him. I mean, I know people are just like, oh, my God, what a comeback, blah, 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 blah. Um, but for me, like, this is not warrant. All of a sudden, you get to fight for a title. You had a title fight with Max Holloway, got destroyed. Then you beat Zombie. And then you got to walk into another title fight against Volkanovski. He almost won, but pretty much got destroyed. I mean, Volk was, was fucking him up. And then you had a fight with Yair, blew your shoulder out, and now you have a fight with Yair. We're not giving you another title shot. You got to fight somebody. You've been in the top five for 16 years with four fights. 
how to get <laughs> some blood on the on the man's man. I think that's fine. Like Bolar, evil, uh, most off, evil off. Um, I think that's the next fight for him. You know, do Yair versus Arnold Allen. They both coming off losses. You know what I mean? Uh, but Brian Ortega cannot get a title shot off of this. If he if he loses that title fight, then we got to put a restriction and just say, you just got to retire. Like, leave us alone. Because this is... <laughs> <laughs> right! Yeah. No, I agree with you in that one, too, Sky. I mean, being his last one was three years ago. And shout out to both of them. I like both of them. Um... But I don't feel like it warranted either. It's like, man, you've been gone for so long. Great win. You pulled it out the fire to get that win. Um, but I think you need to earn a little bit more, you know, show that you're here to stay. Like, what's going to happen next? Or are you going to be gone for another two years? Um, but to Jace, I think Yair looked like Yair. His striking was crisp in that first round. He usually gets taken down like that. Um, even in going into the second round, he was hitting them with head kicks and stuff like that. But uh, Ortega just has better grappling. Mm. It was a great fight, man. His will, is some it's that Mexican will, and then both Mexican fighters. It's the same shit that Grosso got, you know. Tracy was in the What'd building. You say, Tracy said, oh, Tracy was in the building. <laughs> <laughs> the internet was so funny. It's like, um, uh, uh, imagine fighting in front of your ex girlfriend. Like, nah, nigga, yeah. I ain't losing this. Can't be mean. And then a court uh apparently he married. So the girl that came in, yeah, that's yeah, yeah. one of his children, and he went back mm-hmm. and married. Hey, yep. bad bit bad bitch alert. That out. Mm-hmm. Cake. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I feel like, you know, um Ortega seems like he's kind of centered in himself right now. Pause if that sounded weird. Yeah. He seems like he's calm. He seems like he's growing up, so We'll see what road he goes down right now. He's, he's I don't want to say he's looking good because he was getting battered and bruised. <laughs> oh, but he's on the right path now, you know? Being battered and bruised with a dub feels way better. It's yeah. one win. Like, I'm not going to cancel Christmas. I'm not going to, you know, give him a fellatio, fast forward. It's a win. It's a win that he needed over a top-ranked opponent. And, yeah. hey, you know, a win is a win. You feel me? A win is a win, yep. Yeah. Like I said, I'd love to see him against Mozart, Ivalov. Um, I think that'd be a good fight to really see where Ivalov is, to see if Brian Ortega is back to being T-City. Is he that dude? Um, but overall, it, it what was What month we in right now? Season. We're in uh, March, Black History Month. January. March, April, May, June, July, August, September. Should they fight in uh, at Noche? Yes. Why not? Why not? Uh, yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. And then you could throw Yair on that motherfucker too. Yeah. And Chirez on there. Yeah. Throw him on there. Oh, mm-hmm. God. That Noche fight. I mean, they didn't turn it into a pay per view. That thing going to be fire. I'm so, Sky, I'm so pissed off. <laughs> I'm so mad that they made it a 303, man. Me too. I wanted, I was... it, to be, I wanted it to be a regular ass fight night so I could pull up because you know the ticket's about to go crazy. Yeah, the tickets are Fuck. about to go crazy because they're going stupid with the UFC 300 tickets. I know. Like I don't like know. Like we got like, money out here. I feel like they've been doing like this dynamic pricing to where like the tickets will come out the price they supposed to be, and then like as tickets start selling, like the, the they start raising the prices on them. Like at this point, you can't get a ticket for less than fifteen hundred. For three hundred. Oh, fifteen. Yeah. For three hundred. Yeah. Shit! I better put some knee pads on. God damn. Right. You know. You put in the knee pads on. <laughs> they gotta do what they gotta do. Uh, I can see if Connor hey, three hundred ain't that important. <laughs> I, I think that important. I think Connor's there. I, I think I think Connor's gonna be on there. Nah, no way. On what? On three hundred. Three hundred. Oh no, I'm sorry. I thought you were talking about International Fight Weekend. Oh, international. Yeah, 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 for sure. Um, let's talk about Brandon. That Moreno. could be impossible. Off. The Battle of the Brandons. I'm going to start first. Um, I am actually shocked that Jace and I agreed. At the end of it, we thought Brandon Moreno won rounds one, two, and five. I'm not... He did look bad. So his performance was not good, but I still thought that he won. I'm not upset at the the decision going to Royval, 
What I am upset about is how somebody can miss <coughs> 370 strikes. Yes, you heard me correctly. Over 370 strikes he missed and wins the fight. I mean, like, he literally was doing nothing but throwing fucking strikes, hitting guards, like, hitting nothing. So, yeah, he outstruck him because he threw 400 and something. I'm going to have to pull it up. Strikes. 428. Yeah. So you threw 428 something strikes, but, like, you missed 300 and something that day. Come on. That's nuts to me. You threw out a 28% clip. I seen somebody try to put up uh, Max Holloway's um, thing up against him because like, Max Holloway still threw 200 and something more strikes when he fought Calvin Cater. But Max Holloway was hitting at like a 65% clip. Like, you got to you gotta hit somebody. Like you, Can you imagine? What was this fucking... Remember when Macy Barber went out there and was just striking the air? Y'all remember that fight? Yeah. Was yes. Not, Jabbing the air. Yes, yes. What are we doing here? Or it was like a uh, Rose against Carla. Yeah. Terrible. <laughs> um, Brandon, I think he's definitely gonna look back at that fight and be like, he's gonna see where he went wrong there. <sighs> but I don't want to see Brandon Royval versus um Pantosha. Pantosha. Why is that? Because it just happened in December, and, and Pantoja is going to do the exact same thing. And he's also what zero and two or zero and three against Pantoja now. He's zero and two now. Who? Hey, I don't even care if y'all like who 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 at uh one thirty five can they? I mean one twenty five can they just like surprise us and put in there that I'm not even going to argue about. Uh, Amir missed it, so I guess we can't put him in there. But whatever. Kai Kara, he coming off of a concussion. Whatever, walk that motherfucker up in there. <laughs> oh shit! Like, I don't want to see Royval versus because P- that's who would have to headline three hundred one in Brazil. No, I and he'll do it. it. And it's not like it was the kind of fight to where I was like, "Oh man, it was close. That was good." Like, like heck yeah, run that back. Yeah. So, so let me ask you all this, because it seems that this is an issue in more than just this weight division. Is it the UFC not giving a push to fighters that's causing this? Or is it just that, like, the fighters aren't good enough to 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 get to the mountaintop? You know, because why do we keep facing these same problems in so many divisions of not having the new guys fight for the title besides shout out to Ilya. Um, I, I think that it's a case of favoritism. Mm. A lot of it. A lot of it is they're given as many opportunities as possible to the vets because they bring the eyeballs. Everybody's familiar and new with them. Um, and if you're a newer guy coming up, you got to have finishes in order to like, really have that train behind you, have the fans behind you to really, like, push to want to see you come through. You know what I mean? But, like, these old vets keep getting recycled in to these fights because we know who they are. They're easier to promote. And, you know, it's just, like, a like a clear path for them. But, really, at 125, nobody's running through the division right now. Besides Brandon Moreno, like, he's the only one that's fighting. Consistently. Yeah. There's not a lot of guys at 125. Uh, Muhammad Mukayev is fighting right now this weekend. Um, it's just not a lot of rotations through 125, you know, the top guys. <clears throat> Agreed. I think Matt Schnell's at 125, too. He's fighting this weekend as well. Yeah. So it's just like some of those. Uh, Manel Cop, I think he's at like around six or something like that. So he got the title shot, but he missed weight in his last fight. After all that yep. talking, all of that <laughs> you go and you miss by three points. By three points. <laughs> Clown. So yeah. again, is it is it the UFC's fault or is it the contender's fault? Like I feel like I'm not getting a clear answer. Um are we only talking about flower? I think about? you I think it depends on the division. It does. It de- it depends on the division. Like at 125, is this not a lot of guys cycling through there? So those guys are continuing to fight each other. Mm-hmm. Um, if you go through each of the divisions, I think, you know, 135 is moving along. 45 is kind of weird right now. 55 is about to okay, move but, along okay, a little but, bit. But, but we have the same issue at 45. 
you know, until yeah, Ilya j- right until Ilya just like you know beat the beat up. Like we had the same issue. One fifty five. We always talk about this on the pod about one fifty five. Um, one eighty five. You know, we talk about the same thing. Well, it's it's also a, I think it's a timing thing as well. When guys is it's up to their time, and then they're injured. Cannonier, mm-hmm. he's like the number one. He's hurt right now. Who? Uh, Al uh, Albazi. He was supposed to be somewhere around in that range. This was supposed to be been his shot. Mm-hmm. If he would have beat Brandon, he would have been able to go there. So, yeah. uh, the other Brandon is stepping in on short notice. Yeah. <clears throat> so I think it's this a timing type of thing. Exactly. Yeah. Mm. Um, yeah. I think. I think it's. I guess we're gonna say that it's the fighters then, because like, who is out there really barking, making noise? Like, so like, what? Who- the the thing is, is the 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 best ability is availability. So if you're available to fight, you of course you're gonna get pushed up to the top. You know. Yeah. You can't talk all you want, but if you you can't fight, man, this next guy gonna step up and take your place. Mm. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I think it's but a very. But with this fight, I didn't. I didn't give my uh, little opinion about this fight. I went back and rewatched this fight literally right before the pod because I knew we was gonna talk about this. Uh, I love the real Brandon Moreno. I I thought he lost the fight, man. Oh shit, mm. that's robot. Is that me? I'm not sure. Oh, I think uh, it's Forty-three thirty-seven. Fit in anyways. I don't feel like doing no cuts. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, I felt like he lost the fight. Rewatching it again, he looked better on the second watch than on the first watch. I don't know if you guys went back and rewatched the fight. So on the first time, I was like, what is he doing? What's going on? He looked way slower, way more tired. And rewatching it again, I had it first round to him, second round to him, third round closer. Um, fourth round, he had some good things going on. He started listening, throwing his punches with the kicks towards the end of that. And then in the fifth round, it was a close round. But I think in the the judges' eyes, I think it was still a close round. But the other Brandon, Roy Val, when I say the other Brandon, I mean not the real one. He just threw more volume where it was back and forth. And Brandon didn't do anything to stand out in the round. So if you know, you remember when he was getting clinches, I think it was around 130. And then Herb Dean broke him up hella fast during that time. I don't know what was wrong with him. If Brand Yeah, he was I was like, come on, he was clapping, like, come on, work, work, work. I'm like, bro, yeah, they just got into the clinch. If Brandon would have would have been able to get him down just like in the Ian Gary's fight, I think it would have sealed some of those rounds for him. Hmm. But early in the rounds, I just told Mo, I think he kind of slowed down later in the rounds because what he did earlier in the fight, the way he was circling around the black line, circling around the black line, circling around the black line. And I think, I don't want to say he's gas, but Moreno never fights like that. His gas tank is amazing. I just feel like, oh, also, he wasn't throwing punches and bunches. Everything was poof, overhand right, overhand right. Like, not even Loopy. like a good hook. It was like... Chuck Liddell status over here. <laughs> it, 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 it was it was the Friday night bar overhand right, like everything yeah. you got looping ah, for freedom. <laughs> for real, you know. And in that last round, he did hit him with some shots, but I think Roy Val just looked more active in that round, so the judges gave it to him. And even in that score, in the, in that uh. Actually, none of the judges gave it to him in the fifth round. Which is crazy. Yeah, the, the scoring was all over in the scoring cards, if you look at the scoring. Yeah. So, uh, to me, I just felt like if he was able to ki- keep the original Brandon Moreno's pace that he normally fights with, even throwing a jab with the combos down the middle, it would have been a better outcome for him. He fought a little bit different than he normally does very this different. fight. Yeah, he was very different. Um, I, but midway through the first round, I was like, 
oh, this is a different game plan. But like I said, I still thought that he won. Yep. He did the damage and blows in round number one. But I felt like he was expecting big, big shots. Royval to come out. Like, Royval typically comes out like a wild banshee. So I think he was, like, trying to counter that. And and he, so there wasn't much activity, but he landed the hard blows. Same thing with the second round. Um, I gave the third and the fourth to Royval, and I gave the fifth to him. I think overall, like, I'm looking at the stats. Royval threw a hundred. I'm looking at total strikes, not significant, because that's subjective in my opinion. Total strikes. Royval threw 162 strikes in the fifth round and landed 57, which puts him at 29. percent Well, he looked like he was doing something, but he wasn't doing nothing. He wasn't landing nothing. Um, which I was just like crazy. Like everything, every like I said, he missed. I just did the math. 379 strikes. Hey, we, we all can be like the on most those, on, on those strikes. You know, when the when the judge is looking at that, he's still. It's not like Rose and Carla when they're just shadow boxing in front of each other, just looking <laughs> stupid. <laughs> you know, at least he's active. That's what I, I, I like. I tell fighters. That's why I tell people is like, if you're gonna be fighting, you have to be active and engaging. And also, I think in that, uh, if I remember correctly. The fake Brandon was walking down Moreno. He was going forward more, a lot more. You know, it was it was one of those things. I feel like that. I, it ain't no excuses. If Moreno would have fought his, he had a game plan. He had a game plan toward. If he would have just stayed in the pocket and threw more, I think he would have. He would have came out unscathed. You know, because Roy Val doesn't have a lot of power. Listen, at the end of the fight, Brandon Moreno was unscathed. Brandon Royval's face was looking like he had an allergic Yeah, he had that knot on his head. <laughs> because Brandon uh, Moreno had kicked his freaking legs so effing bad. You that's, know what I mean? That's like, my favorite thing because the coach weird. told him, the coach told him he uh, that was going into the third. He was like, work your combo with the leg kicks. End your, end your combo with the leg kicks. And those were beautiful. And I was like, oh, I was yelling at the screen all week. Like, he's working then. You know the pressure started coming up more because the, the, that third round was super close as well. And I was I I told because I was on live I was like, you never know if you got a dumbass judge they might give that to Brent the Moreno <laughs> they might give it to Moreno yeah. because but he you, is working in there. But you know overall and, and the, in the sorry. in the third round was it the third round or the second round where it was a take? I should have took the notes. I think it was the third round. Uh, it was. The third down, Brandon Moreno had landed. Third six. down, fourth down. Oh, sorry. <laughs> the, third round, the third round. Well, Brandon he had, had a takedown take down with the scramble. He had, he had one takedown in the second and then two takedowns in the third. In the second round, it was towards the end of the round, and I think that's when he was firing on them from the top. Mm-hmm. Pause. Hey, yo. And also, like I said, man, when he got the clinches – if he was able to take him down towards the end of those rounds, like in the fourth and the fifth round, he, it would have it would have been sealed. It would have been sealed instead of just holding him. He was trying to do the Pantoja shit that happened to him. Yeah, yeah, and guess what? And look how that got scored, right? Pantoja mm-hmm. did it and won that fight based off the exact same thing. No damage. I was holding up against the fence. T.J. Dillashaw beat Corey Sanhagen with the exact same thing, holding Corey up against the cage. With no damage, what, what what do you disagree with, Jace? I agree to disagree. I I I I just want to say this because I'm well, kind of over this. Because these people actually won in the judges on the paper. Here's here's my thing. I didn't enjoy this fight. Like I just yeah. overall like don't really need to see them fight again. Like they was. I, I was starting to check my phone during the fight. You know what I mean? I'm seeing what's going on on social media, and for me, I, that's always like the indicator, the the barometer, if you will, like if I'm engaged, you know what I mean? Like I was not engaged in this fight at all, man. Like I was like, okay, Moreno's on some weird shit. Like I don't really know what's popping off. I was like, I don't know, dog. What, what else is going on in life? You heard? Yeah. Bad. Damn. Um, yeah. See, it, guys, it, it we got a rough. fucking casual here, guys. You don't like watching Stop fights. playing, bro. I love watching <laughs> fights, but I want to be entertained. I'm always engaged, but just because you don't never know what's going to happen, man. It's like it's reading a, or watching a movie. You got to get to the end and be like, damn, something crazy might happen. Yeah, reading but so, book, you got to finish what's going to happen. Yeah, but like, you know, 70% of the time you can predict what's going to happen in a movie. You know, 
especially when it's going a certain way. You know, like that fight was headed a certain way. Like, yes, there's the occasional shout out to to, to Leon Edwards, right? But it's like even that fight, I remember kind of just like, da 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 da. Da, 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 da. You was sleeping. You that know? shit woke your ass right up. Huh? Hey, that's big facts. That's big facts. <laughs> I'm keeping a buck. I didn't see the kick on Leon like a hundred percent live. It was like me looked da, da, da. Oh shit! And looked up. Oh shit! That was, that was DC. <laughs> you remember DC said, he "Yeah, looked down." He... <laughs> yeah, he looked down. It was like you know, nothing was worse than when I was in San Diego. Cruz versus uh... oh. Are, my and, God. and literally, I'm talking shit to everybody. I'm having a good time. I look down at my phone, and I hear, oh, and I look back up, and Dom is face and down. Dom is asleep. And like, face down, ass up. Miss I missed it that quick. Don't don't check nothing. Don't take your phone. That is the worst thing about live sports. Yes. The worst thing about live sports. You know what I mean? Like, you look away. Ah! You look, oh! Okay. Oh, why? Why? How did I miss this? Uh, unless unless you're like me and Jace uh, with Tony Ferguson versus um, Michael Chandler, we're like, oh my eyes peel back. We're like, oh my God, Tony won a round. He's looking good. Let's go. Wasn't First y'all was there, right? Huh? Yeah, we was in the building. Yeah, we was in the building. How? What happened to the crowd? Everybody took a breath. There was a moment of silence, and then it was like, oh, but it was. <laughs> oh, and then after wow. that, we was kind of just all sitting around like, this man gonna get up. After that, you could hear wow. a mouse fart. You could literally hear a mouse fart because everyone went from "Oh my god, holy shit" to "Hey, this nigga's still down." You know what's going yeah. on here? And yeah. literally, like we thought that he died for a second. Like he did not move an inch. Jason, I just I held him like this. I was like mouth wide open. We're just standing there, just like what did we just see? A legend died. Okay. Damn. Yep. Hundred percent. Uh, what was the hot take that we had, Jace? Oh, there's a few different hot takes that we got. Sorry, let me cue up the, the good old Instagram. Well, while you're looking, I have one right off the dome. Shout out oh. to my boy Makoa off of TikTok. He said by the end of 2025, JDM, Jack Della Madalena, will be a champion. <laughs> at 170. <laughs> Della ain't taking it off of Shavkot. Hey, hey, but 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 speaking of JDM. Shavkot going to be the champ. Hold on. Spe- speaking of shit, JDM, because I saw his interview, <laughs> shout out for him for actually calling out Shafkat. He says, after I Did win he? my fight, after I win my fight, I want Shafkat. Because he's fighting mm-hmm. uh, who? Burns next? Burns. Who, 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 who? Yeah. He's like, after Burns. I beat Burns, next week. Fi- sign me up for Shafkat. Which a I dog. found. That's a dog. Well, what's really interesting is that they're teammates. Like you don't really hear teammates talking about I'll fight my 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 teammate, you know? Uh-huh. Like that's Jack weird. Della is in uh, Australia. Is it? Oh, okay, never mind. Yeah. But still, <laughs> shout out to him for for calling out Shafkat because yeah. a lot of people try to say this and I want this. You don't hear a lot of people saying "Give me Shafkat." You just don't hear it. You don't want those problems. Oh, but you know what's that- funny about next week with Jack Della? Remember we were talking about these old crafty vets. Yeah, knocking off hype trains. Yeah, Gilbert Burns might be one of these old crafty vets that can be able to knock off a hype train next week. But we'll get there when we get there. Is there a hype train on JDM? Yes. Yes. Is there? Yes. Oh yeah. shit! I yeah. didn't know. There's yeah, you got to get on that on that TikTokers, bro. We hang out in different circles. I don't know. No one's saying this nigga's name. Oh man, hey. don't get on the TikTok circle because them niggas will annoy the hell out of you. Yo, Gilbert Burns pissed me off. He talking about, oh, you know, the UFC the best fight the best, and I just don't feel like Bilal should fight for the title after he finished. That's fine. Shut up. That's fine. Shut up. Sorry. Man, they be doing Bilal wrong, bro. <laughs> they don't even call. They don't even call, bro. You can't call nobody. <laughs> that was Bilal. <laughs> oh, Bilal. He's the worst. Damn. Uh, he is the worst. Um, I'm happy that he embraces it, though. You know what I mean? You ain't got no tr- You got to. You got to, man. Um, Why do people hate him so much? Serious question. I feel like, I feel like, wait, 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 wait. I feel like every single podcast, like, there's two things that happens. One, all roads leads to Max. 
all rules for the past like six months have led to Bilal. Bilal. Like, a little bit of Kobe. A little bit of Kobe, too. We always bring that yeah, up. Hey, we ain't talking about Kobe, too, too much. But Bilal, we always will I get at least... I brought his ass up today. That's facts. Because I'm uh, always going to throw it in your face just because, pause. Hey, yo, take it or leave it. Oh, leave it. Throw it in your face. Please um, don't. <laughs> I don't like cocktail uh, weenies. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, Jack Della, I, I don't think so. Do you think he'll be champ at end of 2025? Zero chance. I don't think so. 0.00, 0 chance. Well, we won't give it What's zero. he ranked right now? Is he is he 10? He's ranked number 11. Does he make it top five by next year? By the end of this year sometime? By the end of this year. Let me see who's in the top five. I mean, it's possible if he's zero chance. fucking carriage to become a... Anyway. Um, <laughs> uh, let's see who's ahead of him. He got Vicente Luque, uh, Giofino. He could beat him. Boy, Sean Brady, Ian Machado, uh, Kobe Covington, Gilbert, Shavkat, Bilal. Top five is Kobe, Gilbert, Shavkat, Bilal, and Kamaru. Uh, well, he's he beating the brakes off of Kobe. If Stop he playing. Gilbert, he's four. If he beats Gilbert, he's four. He can't go claim his spot. Boom. Yeah. Hopscotch, we jumping over everybody. He ain't claiming his spot. Keep it a buck. We need somebody to come. Would you to- would you like to see that? So if you're like say number eight and you fight number four, do you would you like them to just take their spot if you win? Yeah. Yeah. Huh. No, that would be the worst thing. And the reason why? why I get that, because now like we already have an issue, right, with people holding their spot at the top. This just gave people more incentive not to take that fight of a three against a seven or three against a nine. Like, it just gives them more incentive not to take that spot. They ain't doing it anyway. I know, but I'm saying this would even just give more tender to the fire. You know, and that's something that... At this point, we know the UFC don't give a damn about rankings. I don't even know why they have them. Yeah, they should have them. Yeah. I think I think it's more of an issue for them having them than not having them. Because yeah. when you have someone ranked a certain way, well, A, people are pissed off about the rankings. But B, when you then have the number six, seven, four, five guy fighting for titles over one, two, and three, like that's an issue. I mean, that's what Ilya just did. I, I know. But that's what I'm saying. Like that's an issue of why they shouldn't have it. Hey, and y'all. It, it doesn't make sense. Y'all, I'm about to block Jason's YouTube from commenting. On the, uh, hey. on, on the thing, listen, me, you. Before, before, before you say what you gotta say. Before you say what you gotta say. Hey, this was a good week in comments. You know, there was a lot of people actually talking sense. You know what I mean? Um, whoever runs the scrap and roll page, like I don't know what kind of bullshit they was on, but in general, like I think we had like almost a hundred comments this week. Uh, shout out oh, to nice. everyone that commented last week. Hey, last week too was fire. Yeah, too. being those comments, boy. Cause like, if you don't so want shout direct, out to y'all. if y'all want direct shout interaction, y'all want direct interaction with us. You know, I, I I'm not on really any other um, social m- m- media comments besides the YouTube. You want to talk to the great one, the chosen one, the Jace? See me in the YouTube comments. Hey, only thing that I ask y'all, Ilya Taporia fans, is come back. Come back when it's all said and done. Don't duck. Don't hide. Wait, wait, stop, stop. It's already said and done. He's champ. No, I'm talking about when Max beats him. You mean if Max gets a chance to fight the champ? He already, he's the only person in line. He talking about Conor McGregor in Islam or Max. The, the other two are not about to fight him. I would love to see Ilya against a Connor or an Islam. That'd be fantastic. Connor and Islam are not. Islam, Islam going to fuck him, him up. Either. All y'all gonna keep saying is Islam isn't fighting any lightweight. He doesn't fight any. He's fighting the people that can actually make it and show up. And then y'all be like, his record isn't that impressive because he only fought Vogue and, and 145ers. No, Lee, stay at 145 and clear out your division. If if you that dude, run through Max Holloway, run through uh Mozart, 
run through your division so we can be like, yo, nobody in this division. That's why we were so hyped when Volk went up to 155 because nobody could stop him at 145. So it's like, yeah, go up to 155 and show us what you got. But, but he killed him. But he killed him. He killed the king. He slayed the dragon. That doesn't mean that he gets to go up there. He sl- he slayed that dude. He slayed the dude that he was slaying him with all the, the other 35 dudes. Thirty-five and under curse. He got him with the thirty-five and over curse. <laughs> Let that be the reason. He got him with that. Hey, stats he, talk, baby. He killed. That's a real he, thing. He killed. <laughs> hey, clip that. Shout clip out to my boy that. Rex. Clip Shout that. out to my boy Rex. Isaiah, I see you, my boy. <laughs> All right, let's get to next week's bullshit ass card, man. Yeah, I was just about to say real quick. Uh, These motherfuckers we... over here looking the same. Oh yeah, I forgot about this. <laughs> Why did well, I just <laughs> Hey, wait, stop, stop, stop. This is the photo you take when you're about twelve years old, trying to look big, so you arch your shit up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> look, I got about eighty-two of them photos, nigga. I ain't even going front. Hey, this is Nate Diaz. <laughs> Stockton, homie. Stockton. Yeah, uh, Stockton. I mean, the card is what it is. Well, well we're I'm picking the uh, first three. Oof. Yeah. Start from the bottom. Let's just do a quick scan. Like, is there anything that actually I remotely care about? Uh, yes, hey, a couple Claudio, fights on there. Claudio come with the business. He come to si- he come to put you to sleep. Is that the Claudio, capital uh, guy, Barrow? No, yeah. no, that's uh, Pierre. Sorry, he knocked out. Michelle. He was just recently knocked out. Oh, he got knocked out by Kopalov, but before that, he had knocked out uh, Joseph. Oh, uh, yeah. Home. Um, but on Contender Series, he had a good fight. He comes to fight. He's not coming there to to, to play a game. That that might. Oh, they got the Basharat brother on here against Ariel Hawani. Oh yeah, they, <laughs> yeah. He looked hella look like him. Yeah, he looked like Ariel Hawani, but they got the Basharat brother on there. You know that's which cool one is it, Farid? Uh, Javit. The other one, okay. Yeah, the other one. Uh, well, <laughs> the that, other brother. Cool. Let's see, Jamie Pickett versus Eric Anders. That's just like two. Bro, Jamie Pickett had me looking crazy when he fought Bo Nickel. <laughs> That's fair. Last year, that shit had me looking crazy, but okay, um, I'm going to take you. Oh, you know, that's the prelims. It's not that many fights. Let me see. Two, four, six. <laughs> Hey, who do we appreciate, Early Jace? Start time, y'all. Ten thirty a.m. Pacific time. You know, the uh, only fight on paper on there that looks a shake is is Eric against Pickett. I think that that's going to be like I think Andrew's going going to win. But then when we look at the yeah. main part, I like yeah. Matt Schneel. Remember two years ago he won. Yep, around that's the year what I was saying. Back to Houston, after like he mm-hmm. had a crazy, insane fight. Round of the year. Uh, Umar is fighting somebody. They just have to sign somebody just to get the man to fight because nobody want to fight him. Hey, I'll pause that for a second. Honestly, the only thing I'm looking forward to the car is seeing how Umar looks. Umar yeah. looks, sorry. Other than that, don't give a that, dude. fuck. Oh, of course. Bro don't even got a picture. They don't even want, My like, man. nobody wants the Umar smoke. That's crazy. That's um, fast. Shout out to Corey Sanhagen. Hey, shout out. He he was going to do it. He was the only one that signed, signed on the line. Yeah. Uh, Alex Perez versus Muhammad Makaya. That's going to be a good fight. We haven't seen that. That's going to be a tough fight. That's a tough no, fight. Makaya was about to dominate that nigga. I hope so. He's Yo, Sky, real quick. Goal. Look at Alex Perez cancellations. This dude has the most cancellations I've ever seen. Oh, I know. <laughs> I'm technology, huh? Bro got like 12 cancellations in a row. He's you don't never hurt. fight. <laughs> he's, he's you don't always, never fight. He's always pulling out. Yeah. <laughs> Pause. Hey, yo, chill, Alex Perez. Hey, it's expensive nowadays to have kids. <laughs> pull out, pull out games strong. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> Look at those cancellations. It's crazy. Literally. Your man has. When was his last and- green? His last green was 2020, June, June 6th. <laughs> Damn! Juicy ass for me, Damn! Juicy ass is crazy. Nah, Juicy. bro, tripping, hubby. Yeah, he tripping. And then he he remember he was in the uh, the title fight, the fight that led to uh, Moreno versus Davison. He was in that fight. He lost. 
And then look at these cancellations. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then lost to Pantoja and now has one, two, three, three more cancellations. Dang. I'm not signing what up for be- this. Hell no. Nah. Can't I can't trust you. I can't trust you. You're never gonna show up. You're never what you gonna got going show on up. in his life, man? What what's what's up with him? Hey, I don't know the nigga like that. Because remember, essentially, they cut Ray Borg for like constantly pulling out of fights too. Ray Borg, that's a name I haven't thought about in a while. Yeah, that's a name. Like, he had an actual reason. Like his daughter was going through surgeries and stuff. You know what I mean? Like there was a lot going on. Oh, whoa, whoa, quick on a real quick side note, CJ. No homo. I thought about you this weekend. When was the last time you thought of the name Miguel Torres? Oh, I always, always, always. He's always on my, uh, like I said, I'll be on these TikToks and I'll be like, do you guys know who Miguel Torres is? They'll be like, who, who, who? I'm like, y'all better go show respect to that man. He was that he dude. He was a dog. Go to For WEC and go watch him fight, bro. He was slick. He, Bro, he was nasty. He was the first nasty. Mexican, like real Mexican. Yeah, there was like uh, uh, Gilbert. Um, Melendez, but like Miguel Torres is like speaking no English type, yeah, of Mexican MMA fighter, you know what I'm saying? And he had the peso pluma haircut way back then, yes, he did, yes, he did. Fucking paisa, <laughs> hey, paisa, way. <laughs> what does that mean again? I just remember being in high school, they like paisa, way. A paisa is a clown, right, girl? A payaso is a clown. A paisa, oh. that's like a... Well, a, 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 a paisa. A paisa is a somewhat a it's, derogatory term. That's what I'm about yeah, to say. Yeah, a paisa like, is like a, a, like a super, like... White me, me, me Mexican, yes? Yeah. No, that's a fresa. A white Mexican is like a fresa, like the little prissy girls. A, a paisa is like a like a Mexican Mexican, straight a from Mexican the border. Mexican, yes. Mexican, Mexican. You know what I mean? Always with the fucking <laughs> shit on them. Got <laughs> yeah. Look at this paisa. Big jewelry. Big big jewelry. uh, You know, the big Jesus piece. Look at this paisa straight over. Let let me see your card. All right, let's stop. We're going to get Let's stop saying that. We're not trying to offend nobody, but we grew up in San Diego and it's different. different. And trust me, I know a lot of paisas out there. Shout out to all my paisa. Shit. Last three in here. We got yeah, Alex let's get Torres, this. Um, versus Muhammad Makayev. I'm going Muhammad. Muhammad. I got Makayev. Oh, God. Uh, Vitor Petri- Hey, we've been doing good as we all been on the same. Like, it hasn't been as bad. As- I thought it was going to be bad, but we've been doing good. Uh, Vitor Petrino versus Tyson Pedro. Um, Tyson Pedro is my baby daddy, so I'll never go against him. <laughs> Who you got, Jace? Both baby daddies. <laughs> I got a lot. Um, just to keep it different, man, I'm gonna go Vitor. Just to yeah, keep it different. God damn it, brother. Y'all going again? We've been right here too much. <laughs> I was gonna go Vitor too. Pineapples. It's weird. Like I said, man, it's good for you to, to finally be a winner, man. You know what yeah. I'm saying? No, we both lost these last week. <laughs> um, Motherfucker jinx my up. boy Moreno because you picked him, bro. We knew you don't. <laughs> we know you don't like him. <laughs> oh, that's not true. I don't. It is I, true. You I don't dislike. Him. No, I don't dislike him. I just uh, not. I don't think he's that dude. How like, y'all be just giving him fellatio? What you mean? Because he's a two time champ. Because he over your man's. Now he's a two time loser. Two he's times. Still, he's still a two time champion over your band. Two times. Uh, two times. Two times. Fair. fair. Also, zero and two though. Let's just you know, let's put that out there. Losing. Hey, we got to start bringing. Hey, we got to start bringing that shit up too. A lot of motherfuckers is going zero and two who used to be hella good, and it's kind of sad to see it. Hey, Jarzinho versus Shamil. Do y'all remember when Jarzinho Rosenstrike was supposed to be that dude? Yeah. You know what I mean? Going in there, hitting people with Scott Starch. You know, and then all of a sudden ran into a fucking <sighs> the scariest version of Francis and Ghana you ever seen running full speed across the fucking ring at him and just destroying this man's life. 
Anyways, oh, you already know what it is. It's Black History Month. Your boy oh, Rosen Strikes no, about. Up. They're not. They're not fighting in Black History Month. Well, good thing because Rosen Strikes about to get fucked up. <laughs> about to get straight dry humped. Hey, Shamil is twelve and zero, y'all. This is his. Uh, this is gonna be second his fight in the UFC. Fight in the UFC. Yep. He, he fought of- Martin Boudet a couple weeks ago, months ago. Yeah. In December. I'm going to go Gaziev, too, just off the strength. I don't Me know. Too. Oh, I don't know him like that, but I guess y'all know yeah. his strength. Me, too. Yeah. Shout so. out to B2. Yeah, this weekend's card, it is what it is. Um, but y'all know what that means. Easily could be just starch fucking city. As I was telling Scott earlier today, on paper, this looks like the worst card ever assembled. Ever assembled. On paper. This looks like the type of card that you see at your local scene. Yes. A, a <laughs> regional all day. Regional. Where, where you get in for fucking 10 bucks and you get a free PBR with your purchase of your drink. Facts. Facts. Um... Yeah, that's this weekend's card. Oh, real quick. I do have... Go ahead, CJ. Before we go, 1FC this Friday, Anatoly Malikin is going for three belts. He dropped... He has the heavyweight. He has the light heavyweight, and he's dropping down for the middleweight. So y'all tune in. They're they're in Qatar, so I'm not sure what time it's going to be. So tune into that if y'all into 1FC. Uh, It says March 1st. It'll be... Seven. The main card will be three thirty p.m. No, that can't be right. Uh, no, it says seven thirty a.m. Eastern, so that'd be four thirty a.m. our uh, Pacific time. Damn. And it what well, is this in MMA? Uh, um, uh, Anatoly is in MMA. Okay. Because he's fighting RDR, Rainer De Ritter. Yeah. Here, let me show this. Real so real. he's going for three belts. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Definitely make sure that y'all check it out. I've been hearing crazy things about one, like one about the uh, for, oh. We got to keep positive energy because I don't want that to happen, so. <laughs> uh Arjan, uh, he used to be the heavyweight champion. Uh, he was the first Indian champion. He used to fight in the Oh, he got beat by Anatoly. Oh, oh okay. Mm-hmm. That was a few months ago. All right. Well, we'll I, you know, before we get out of here, I know we're running low on time. I wish that, like, I forget. Is it Paris where they were talking about doing uh, MMA as a uh, Olympic event? I don't know which. Uh, I would love that. I would love that. I w- there's nothing more I would want as an MMA fan than to have like a a actual Grand Prix. You know what I mean? Of like literally fuck your organizations. Who is the best in the world at heavyweight one fifty five? Whatever it may be, like that would be so amazing. And yes, it's just a ah, pipe dream. You know what I mean? But if there's one thing I would want for MMA is to have just like a real life world Grand Prix. Yeah, that would be super dope. Yeah. It really I wonder, and, and and the UFC couldn't stop people from fighting in the Olympics because that's considered amateur because you don't get quote unquote paid for it. They could do it. That's the only thing that'll be weird though. I would think they will have like um headgear on and probably like shin guards on so i think it'll be a little weird since it's amis i'm still might not be able to throw they might not be able to throw elbows they can't yeah definitely can't throw elbows i'm watching regardless i want to see john jones out there bro john jones fighting in the amis is crazy (laughs) (laughs) hey shout out to john jones the boy looking sick thick Shout out to 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 Ngannou. You said your boy looking fat. Kept <laughs> it a buck. He did. Um, I do have to let y'all know. By the time this video comes out tomorrow, by the time the video comes out tomorrow, there's gonna be two twins that are, that will have been born. 
uh yeah so i may not be on the podcast maybe i'll be here next week we'll see how i'm feeling but you know if i'm not y'all make sure that y'all show love in the comments for not only yep, the yep, yep. Show babies, but also give jace a hard time uh because you know the sound of valley fight is coming up but if i am then i will definitely be here talking smack um yeah so that's gonna be happening so if y'all see me for a couple weeks that's what's going on but everybody else will be here. Jason will be here. CJ will be here. Hopefully, Damien will be here. We reached out to Aaron because we all know that Aaron loves Sean O'Malley. Uh, hopefully, he could be on next week because um, 299 we, is crazy. We will have a special guest for 299. It's just gotcha. a matter of who's this going to be, but we will have a special guest. Yeah. So, thank y'all for commenting. Thank y'all for watching. All the new viewers reaching out. We really, really appreciate it. We are just fans that are here to have a good time, banter with each other. We're just doing what we would do, whether or not we were talking on this screen or not. So we appreciate y'all constantly checking in every week. But until next week, we are out. Shout out to Mama Sky. Shout out to Mama Sky. (laughs)